Battery's still working. There it goes. Success! At least you can keep that battery maintainer on. Memories. First startup for quite a few months there, eh? Well, greetings everybody. It is spring, finally. Get the bike out of the shed. After its long slumber, got her swept out, did a little inspection and made sure that there weren't, wasn't, I didn't find any mice droppings. I had all kinds of bounce sheets on the ground. That's what I used. Um, everything was fine. Started up good. Just took her for a little run around the block just to make sure everything was good. Check the tires, got the tires up. She could use a little cleaning. But other than that, uh, we've got the bike out for the first day. It's not exactly warm out, but it's sunny. It's just a little above the freezing point, but uh, we do what we got to do. I got some time now. So my first thing I'm going to do is put this Beeline GPS on that I got. The Beeline GPS, you saw me do a, well, if you were watching my videos, I did a little unboxing of it in the winter. And it's just been sitting down there waiting for spring ever since. So there it is there. So I'm going to try and install it on the bike now with this little uh, extra kit they bought this is the the metal kit rather than the plastic one and I think it's gonna go nicely right on here in the middle and we're gonna give that a try and see how that works so I'm gonna work get working on that okay this is without the rubber nubbies and I think it probably would be fine Let's see what it's like with one. Yeah, too small. I think the thicker one or the thinner one is better. Like I don't know if there's a up or a down or a right way or a wrong way, but we'll just try this. Now that feels too loose. I'm gonna have to put something in. Try it. Wait. See if that squooshes down better. Good. This Allen key came with it, by the way. And I've already charged it up, so we're not worried about that. Now we use the other end just to get a little strength. 
feels good. And this here, I never like to over tighten stuff. I just find that that just gives you problems. I still got the protective cover. I might as well keep it for as long as I can. And put that in. I don't know which way's up. I'm going to assume that the off button is up. And there, she's on. So I've already programmed one quick route around here. So we're going to try and take it for a spin and see if it works. Okay, so just getting my phone up here. And I'm going to get my Beeline app open. I don't know if you could see. I'll stand in the shade. You might be able to see better. There, where's the Beeline app? Oh, it's on. There it is. And there's a route, okay? I, I programmed one route in already, and I did it by a bunch of waypoints. It's not a huge route because we're just testing this today, but it does have a few dodgy back roads and whatnot, so we're not sure what kind of trouble I'm going to get into. But it's just a 50 kilometer round trip. So I've got that in, and I better turn this on. Just push and hold. There we go. Where to? Now, if this is my first time, so I'm just going to try and hit go and it looks like it's up and running I'm not sure why it wants to go that way but I'm gonna start with my default area so I'm just gonna leave that on on the phone beeline app it says I think it says you can even have it off but I'll just have it on for now so the big arrow is the direction you're going the dot is the direction you have to turn and the number is how far until you hit that turn. Because I know roughly where I'm going, I'm just going to start out and see if it kind of re replans itself from my actual start point here. <coughs> and we'll see how this works out. Okay, so it's saying in uh, 33 meters Hang a left. Well, that seems pretty straightforward, especially when you're in the country. I don't know how easy this would be if you're in an urban environment. But it's telling me hang a left here. I don't know if this was the exact, maybe it was. Maybe I messed up when I was <laughs> planning my route, but. Okay, we're good. We'll just go the way it says to see if it did the route. So there we go. And now it's saying in 3.6 kilometers, we're going to hang a right. So far, it seems fairly easy to read. One of my first concerns about getting this was uh, because it uses your phone as the GPS, uh, is it using up data on my phone? Kind of like if I was running Google Maps all the time, a lot of guys put their phone up and, and run Google Maps, but it's using data. Now, around here, you don't really get unlimited data, but uh, the answer is no, it's not It's not using up your data, apparently. So we'll go with that. So the, there's a lot of twisted turns here, so I have to keep an eye on, the, on it more often, but I guess if you're on a longer trip and, and you know, okay, I've got 53 kilometers till I have to turn, then you don't have to really glance down at it too much. There's a couple of modes you can use with this thing as well. Now this is your planned route GPS mode that I'm using now, which is the conventional. Um, or you could just say, take me to this little town or this little point on the map and just point straight at it all the time. And so what it will do then, I believe is, I believe just the big arrow constantly points directly at your target and then it, uh, it, it it just tells you how far away you are from it and then you pick the roads you turn down what whatever road you want you go whatever route you want that way but it doesn't tell you when to turn it's just telling you how far away your destination is and what direction and that is it so that's really cool for trying to f find new roads and whatnot Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
hold on there. Okay, watch the sand on the corners is the worst. That's why I drive like a granny on those corners, because this time of year, sand. Nasty. Alright, so we're heading up to this uh, where I believe is the waypoint where it's it's just saying keep going straight. So it's a stop sign where I put a waypoint 30 meters. So let's see what happens when we go straight through. It should just reset to the next waypoint, of course. And again, another very sandy corner, so I gotta watch. Nope. Nobody coming. Okay, good. At least I don't have to turn on that corner. I almost wiped out on that corner once. But we kept two wheels down. And so the one thing I really like about this is that it's it's following the route that I planned which is really nice. If I'm on a long trip, I want to be able to lay in my hotel room at night, plan out the whole journey for the next day, on what roads I want to take and where I want to go. Some people like to just explore aimlessly, but I really want to explore certain roads and things. And I really wasn't getting that with the GPS, so that's why I got this beeline, and we're going to just see how it does. Alright, so 27 meters. Well, I wouldn't call that 27 meters, but ah, well, close enough. And saying, hang a sharp right here. So we are going to hang a sharp right. And again, more sand on the corners. Gotta love the springtime. As long as I don't go ass over apple cart, I'm okay. All right, it's fine here. And now, yeah, just as I said, this should take me, and it's just saying just hang out immediate left so it did record the job which is nice this guy's gonna wait for me good man and off we go all right so saying hang left here as you can see it says seven meters but whatever Again, I gotta watch the slipperies here. We're good. No cars. We can just roll on through. Because bikes are allowed to do that. In my rule book, anyway. Alright. Let's just go right here. That's a good spot. Just pointing this out that this is what I like about these eggs here. You see all the happy chickens? Just grazing around, just grazing all over the farm. I don't know if you can see too well the GoPro, but you just chickens everywhere. And they're just allowed to graze whatever they want, and pick at little bugs and things, and that's what makes your eggs good, and tasty, and full of vitamins. Happy chickens. Love two clicks hang a left I'm just wondering if it's gonna make me go up the dirt road did I make it go dirt road I think I did or am 
Am I gonna hang a left up here? I'm not sure. To head into Walters Falls. I'm gonna go where it says. So I said I'm taking you a little back road. It's a dodgy one too. Big ass hill coming up. It's my first gravel for the season. It's not bad though, it's hard pack. But there's a hell of a hill coming up, so I might have to give her the beans going up that hill a bit. So let's do that. I hope no one's coming the other way. I can always go over there. It's actually not that bad. It looks bad when you're approaching it, but it's not that bad of a hill at all, really. I'd hate to do it in the winter, though, on, a, on any kind of vehicle. I'd hate to live, like, right here. I have to go up and down that hill all the time. That would suck. 27 clicks hang a left. Okay, that's weird. Oh, okay. There is a little, there's a little road up here. And I've never been up this road, so here we go. We're getting into the dodgy part. But anyway, if you got like the loose stones on top of the hard dirt, then it gets dodgy because you could just roll like being on frickin' marbles. Right here. But it's probably not as bad as what I think it is. It's, oh shit, this says no exit. This ain't gonna work. I'm gonna have to reroute. There, here's my trick for getting the bike to move. <laughs> you bounce it. Brake, let go of the brake, bounce. And of course it's gotta be in neutral. <laughs> when you're trying to back up a hill a bit and make sure your feet don't slip <laughs> alright good enough so that ain't gonna work we're gonna have to reroute let's just go nice and easy again see this loose marbly stuff Worries me more than anything. This dirt is fine. I don't mind dirt. Dirt we can do. So we're going to reroute. And the old beeline doesn't like it. Now let's see if it reroutes us in a minute. It should. Alrighty. See this stuff you don't even really have to stand for, but it might stand a bit. It's wobbling me around. I on this stuff I feel more comfortable sitting. And that brings us back to the gravel road I was talking about, the gravel road talk. You know, there's hard packed dirt like this, then there's marbles like you saw on that last bend. I mean there's a big difference between those two things. And then there's the deep soft gravel even worse and you know the guy who's on the video and he says well you know you got to put lots of pressure on the front tire uh, well to a point that works you know and he, he demonstrated by saying if you put your hand lightly on the table and then move it it'll slide right but if you push hard on the table and then try to move it it won't slide yes that's true on a flat surface now try doing that with your hand on marbles and push hard on the marbles. It's still going to slide. It's going to roll. Alright, so still not getting any cooperation. Uh, I think it says it's rerouting now. Wasn't getting much cooperation from that GPS and it's, I don't know, it's thinking about what to do. Hey, are we going to do something? It does not like where I'm going, and I know where I am. So great, so if you hit a road that you can't get through, a no exit road, is this what you're going to get? Alright, moving right along. Now it's saying in 37 meters, hang a left. I think I'm going to be taking that deviation road. We're going to take some back roads. 
and again a little marbly gotta get the old sea legs going again I didn't buy an adventure bike so I could never do gravel and I just gotta get used to doing that too when you're going over these hills and the, these back roads you better keep right much as you don't like that right lane it's always on a slope but if somebody comes whipping over that hill it's bad news if you're in the middle of the road Ooh, yeah. just not used to it that's why I'm doing this I can get my off-road skills happening. It's just a bend anyway. It's probably got more grip than I think, but you just gotta get to learn the limits of your bike, which I have not yet with this kind of stuff. I haven't learned just how much grip does it have when I'm going around those gravel corners. You know, is it safer than you think or, or is it ready to, ready to fly? Hey! Easy stuff, but I can feel the tire moving around in that softer muck. I can just imagine how Itchy Boots feels. She's on this stuff all the time. And she loves this stuff. These rednecks and their rusty old Dodge pickups. They like to whip around. All right. This is where I don't like twisties is when it's on loose gravel. <laughs> but like I said, a lot of guys will say this isn't gravel at all. And they're right, it's not gravel. It's hard packed dirt. So we just want to get the feel. All right, so we're gonna hang it right here. Hopefully nobody coming. Looks good. It's saying, keep on going down this road. Well, I'm the one who planned a little bit of back road. I didn't do, I didn't plan at all to be on the other roads. Nobody coming, we're good. We're off. Like a herd of wild bald bikers. 6 clicks. I hope it's a through road. Well, I didn't see any no exit signs. Again, this is another road I don't travel as much. Well, that's interesting. The, the beeline's working for any kind of country driving. You still got to kind of keep an eye on it, especially with all the turns I put in. Another person on a horse. Must be just horse day. So I got through there. There's a few gravelly areas, but not too bad. That was a fellow bike dude with the, the first bike wave of the year. Hey! First bike wave of the year. Oh, I must have passed something with the B line because now all of a sudden it's screwed up. It's going to take a little while to reroute. It's not as fast as a GPS. But I must say, she's certainly small and compact for a GPS. So it might take a little practice using this thing, but to me it looked like it said turn left there, and I did, and then all of a sudden it's rerouting. Maybe there was an immediate right or something I missed. I wasn't watching it closely enough. So I've gone like eight kilometers past the point where it wanted me to take that road and it's still wanting me to go back. And look, 7.7 kilometers. Go back 7.7 .7 kilometers, take a left. So it's almost like the opposite of what the Garmin would do. Whereas the Garmin would be like, hey, cool, more of a major road. Let's just take the major road and get to our destination. 
This one wants me to stick to the root in the boat I have it in. And it's not thinking about end destination. It's thinking about where the next waypoint is. And so I just keep going farther and farther away from the waypoint even though I'm heading back home at the end of the loop. So if I really wanted to follow the route and I was far away from home, I, I would probably have had to turn around and go find that road if I wanted to stick to the route. Okay, now it's kind of reset. It wants me to go back and go hang a left or whatever, but I think we're done with it for now, just for the first time out. But yeah, I believe that's what I'm going to do with this. Is I'm going to keep that route and I'm going to try it again and next time, another day. I still want to get more practice on that gravel anyway. And But this time, when I get to that point, I'm going to watch for whatever road it wanted me to go down. Yeah, I'm just heading back home. It's only about a mile up the road, so might as well end this here. So that was my first time out with the B-Line. I would call it semi-successful. I'm not saying I'm unhappy with it. I just, I believe I have to work with it a bit more and get more used to it. All right, so we made her home to the old bike shed. We do hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I just had to get out and try this GPS. It's been sitting downstairs for the whole winter and it was time to, time to try it out. So we're gonna try it some more, but that was my first experience using the B-Line. I think it works, but we got to work with some more. We'll plan some more routes. So we'll see you in the next one. Remember to like and subscribe. Help me out. Thanks a lot. See you later.